In this video, we're going to start a new series on TriHackMe, the learning path introduction to cybersecurity. This learning path introduction to cybersecurity will cover careers in cybersecurity, offensive security, and we'll actually hack our own first application, defensive security, defending against a live cyber attack, and then exploring security topics in the industry. There's no prerequisites or prior knowledge. As long as you come in with the drive to learn, you'll get through this real quick. So we'll cover introduction to cybersecurity. It'll have intro to offensive security, intro to defensive security, careers in cybersecurity, and then the next part will be introduction to offensive security. Those of you looking for red team or ethical hacking, pen testing, this is going to be what you're probably going to focus on most. So this will cover web application security, operating system security, and network security. And then we'll have introduction to defensive security, those are for you blue teamers out there. Intro to digital forensics and security operations. Now into our first term, intro to offensive security. Hack your first website legally in a safe environment hosted on TriHackMe and experience an ethical hacker's job. So task one, what is offensive security? So in short, offensive security is the process of breaking into computer systems exploiting software bugs and finding loopholes in applications to gain unauthorized access to them to be the hacker you need to behave like a hacker so that means putting on that black cat just so you can think like a black cat hacker but you don't want to actually become a black cat hacker you want to be the good guy that simulates being an attacker so that way you can find vulnerabilities and try to get them passed before the cyber criminals do so that's what we'll be doing in this room and on the flip side, there's also defensive security, which is the process of protecting organizations, networks, and computer systems. In a defensive cyber role, you could be investigating affected computers or devices to understand how it was hacked, tracking down cyber criminals, or monitoring infrastructure for malicious activities. So offensive security basically is the approach that you take to find and mitigate vulnerabilities through simulated attacks. So there are different roles in offensive security. You have the penetration tester or pin tester. These are the guys or girls that simulates attacks on systems to find vulnerabilities. So this is when you put on that black hat mindset and you emulate and you simulate a actual threat actor in the environment. You have a red team operator. These, these people simulate advanced threats to test an organization's defenses. So this would be red team versus blue team. Red team tries to break into things, blue team tries to keep them out, to keep it simple. You have ethical hacker, same thing as a pen tester, they identify and fix security vulnerabilities. Then you have bug bounty hunters, so these are people, they're more freelancers that find and report security bugs and they get a reward for it. For example, finding a bug in, let's say iPhones for example, you could be potentially awarded for finding a critical bug. And then there's exploit developers. So these are the these are the people that develop software exploits to demonstrate vulnerabilities. So think about Eternal Blue, for example, created by the NSA that got released. Exploit developers created that exploit to target SMB1 vulnerabilities in Windows operating systems. You have security consultants. So these people are the ones that advise organizations on improving their security overall, their security posture. And then you have a social engineer. These are people that actually manipulate people into gaining unauthorized access. For example, let's say I dress up as a plumber. I walk into a building. I tell the receptionist I need access to the top floor to fix a leak. I could potentially get by. And then as soon as I get on the elevator, get out of it, I could explore, look for computers, maybe plug in a USB stick into a couple computers to pull keys and things like that. So there is a path you could take for offensive security. For example, I don't really think having a degree is necessary for this, for offensive security. As long as you have a solid foundation in IT and cybersecurity, there are a lot of free courses out there that you could pick up quick, like Professor Messer's Network Plus, Security Plus, and A Plus, that'll teach you, that'll help build the fundamental knowledge and help set that foundation to, to pursue offensive security as a whole in your career. There are some certificates out there like the OSCP and the OSCE and a lot of other popular ones that are popping up. To get hands-on practice in offensive security, you'd want to focus on platforms like TriHackMe, Hack the Box, and participate in Capture the Flags. 
or CTFs. You, you could also network in the community by attending meetups or going to conferences, conventions, joining forums, and just networking with other cybersecurity professionals that focus on the offensive side of things. And lastly, staying up to date and continuously learning. With, ha with ethical hacking, things always change. So you're always going to find try to find new ways to get in. And they're in the blue team, the defensive guys always find new ways to block the ethical hackers or pen testers out. Now, which of the following options better represents the process where you simulate a hacker's actions to find vulnerabilities in a system? So this would be offensive security. And on to task number two. So hacking your first machine before going into cybersecurity careers and what offensive security is, let's get you hacking. So this is where we'll do a real exercise. It's in a isolated environment. So it's not like we could go out and actually hacks, hack another organization by mistake. So you want to start your machine. This may take a few minutes. And in this instance, we'll have the machine populated on the side of the window. So we'll be using a web-based VM. It can take a minute or two to spin up. So let's go ahead and close that out. So now we see that we have our split screen over here. So we have fakebank.com loaded. So once you start the machine, it's going to load a split view of your browser. So we already did that, so we're good. Now we're going to use a command line application called GoBuster to brute force fake banks to hide hidden directories and pages. GoBuster will take a list of potential pages or directory names and it will try to access that website with each one of them. So if the page exists, it'll tell you. So step one, you want to open the terminal. So you go over here to the top toolbar and then you'll see this terminal icon. Just go ahead and click it and then it'll show up our terminal. It's a little laggy. So hang in there. Now the terminal also known as our command line interface or command line CLI for short, this will allow us to interact with the computer without using a graphical user interface or the GUI. So on the machine, when we open this terminal over here, it'll allow us to actually interact with the operating system without directly going around clicking everything. We can do everything from the terminal. Now step two, find hidden website pages. Most companies will have an admin portal page giving their staff access to basic admin controls for day-to-day -day operations. For a bank, an employee might need to transfer money to and from client accounts. Often these pages are not made private, so this will can allow attackers to find hidden pages that show or give access to admin controls or sensitive data. So we could try typing the following command in the terminal to find potentially hidden pages on fake banks website using GoBuster, which is a command line based tool. So now you can copy and paste or you could type out the commands. So you could do first GoBuster dash U to specify the URL in question, HTTP, and then specify fakebank.com, which is the URL. So you see fakebank.com. But before we do that, you want to do a quick LS to see the actual word list that we're going to use. So inside that word list, if you do cat, cat will read out the word list. You'll see every line with potential directory names that we're going to use to brute force. So you can clear that out. Do go buster again. Do dash U to specify the URL in question, which would be fakebank.com. And then dash W is what you're going to use as an argument to specify the word list. So word list, you do tap. This will auto complete the actual name of the file and then directory to specify this as a directory brute force. And then you hit enter and then it'll populate Ghostbuster version mode directory brute force, the URL domain the threads, which you could you could increase the threads to make the output a little bit faster word list. The word list we're using, the status codes looking for 200, 204, 300, these are redirects, and then 400, these are client side errors. Now we see return, we have the images directory, which gave us a 301, which is a redirect, and then the bank transfer, which is giving us a 200, which is okay. Now step three, hack the bank. You should have found a secret bank transfer page, which is the bank dash transfer. This will allow you to transfer money between accounts at the bank. 
type the hidden page into the fake bank website. So on the machine, we'll just come over here to the URL, do a forward slash, and then we'll do the bank dash transfer, hit enter. Now we see we have the admin portal. So this page allows an attacker to steal money from any bank account, which is a critical risk for any bank. As an ethical hacker, you would, with, a, with permission of course, find vulnerabilities in their applications and report them to the bank to fix before a hacker exploits them. So now you wanna transfer $2,000 from the bank account 2276 to your account, which is 8881. So send from bank account 2276, you wanna to send to 8881, and then the amount to send, which is just gonna be $2,000, and then send the money. Success, transfer completed. So you successfully completed the transfer and it'll give you the details. If your transfer was successful, you should now be able to see your new balance reflected on the account page. So now we can go to the account page, return to your account, and then it'll show us over here that we got $2,000 from the bank, from a staff at Fake Bank. Above your account balance, you should now see a message indicating the answer to this question. So this is going to be the, the flag. So essentially this is kind of like a CTF. So we got our flag, which is bank hacked. So that'll be our answer. Bank hacked. Not sure if it's all cap. Okay, so we're good. If you're a pen tester or security consultant, this is an exercise you'd perform for companies to test for vulnerabilities in their web applications. So you wanna find the hidden pages to investigate for vulnerabilities, complete, and then terminate the machine by clicking the red terminate button at the top of the page. So if you just scroll up, you'll see terminate and then you can go ahead and terminate the machine. And then now it'll close it out. Now, if we scroll down some more, go ahead and hit complete and then complete. Now on to task number three. So how can you start learning? I have a video that can help you with that. So there's a video that I put together for offensive security that lists a bunch of free and cheap resources that you can use to help get started and set that foundational knowledge. So people often wonder how others become hackers or security consultants or defenders, security analysts fighting cybercrime. And the answer is simple, break it down, learn an area of cybersecurity that you're interested in and then regularly practice with hands-on exercises. The method I believe in is just diving right in, whether you know it or not, you gotta learn at some point, so might as well start now. Build the habit of learning a little each day on Try Hack Me and you'll acquire the knowledge needed to get your first job in the industry. And here are some example stories. So Paul went from a construction worker to a security engineer. Cassandra went from a music teacher to a security professional. And then Brandon used Try Hack Me while at school to get his first job in cyber. What careers are there? There are pen testers, red teamer, and security engineer. We talked about the first two. Security engineers will design, monitor, and maintain security controls, networks, and systems to help prevent cyber attacks. And now that is the end of the room. So complete on to the next one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.